Hello and welcome to this MGO video. Today I'm going to show you um, the changes with the recent emulator update in regards to how you use your controller. Because the emulator did change things that I didn't know about, you may not have known about. I didn't make this video right away because I was finding things, I was finding a few things here and there and I wasn't even aware of the things right away. You know, sometimes you have to use the emulator for a while to find these things. So I'm just going to share my discoveries here and I think it will help a lot of people out. So the first thing I'm going to say before I start with the controller settings, I'm not going to show you controller settings like my controller settings. I'll say best controller settings. You need to find that yourself. What I am going to teach you is how to understand how to do that because you'll understand what things are, hopefully. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. So first thing I'm going to show you, um, one change with emulator is that stick multipliers no longer work. Um, now you may have noticed that you had experienced run bug when you hadn't before, before the emulator update. That's because your stick multiplier setting you set on your previous update didn't work. If you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, just watch this. It'll make sense about the stick multipliers bit. So I'm going to set these to um, zero. So in theory, when I move my analog sticks now, um, you know, I shouldn't be able to move. So I'm going to save that. Let's see what happens. I'm able to move, move the camera. Clearly, stick multipliers no longer worked. The only way to bypass that is if you use something like DS4 Windows, which has its own, you know, control settings and sensitivity settings, or DS4 Windows, or you use something like Steam, um, which is what I'd normally use on my operating system, but I'm having issues with that. So basically, I've got none of these options. <laughs> but if you're on Windows, those two options should work great. Uh, the next thing I need to show you, so I'm just going to set this back, it's, even though it doesn't make a difference, I've tried all sorts of settings, is the squircle values. So this is something I've not often thought about before, but I think it's important to think about the squircle values. Um, so normally with a controller, it outputs in a circle. So if you watch RPCS3 and you watch what I'm doing with my analog at the same time, you'll see this blue dot that you see here, as you can see, it's going all around in a circle. That's normal behavior for a modern controller. However, DualShock 3 outputs in a square. That means that your corner output with a DualShock 3 controller is different to most modern controllers. And this is where Squircle gets involved. So I'm going to show this with the left stick first. Um, actually, yeah, it's the same with the right stick. But I'm going to show it with the left stick. So at the moment, if I press save now, I've got a Squircle value of zero. So, but you can see with a Squircle value of zero, I sometimes end up walking when I go diagonal. So you might be like, well, why is that? That's because the game is expecting DualShock 3 level input, and at the moment we're getting this. If I set this to 4000, for example, you can see that blue is where my you know, stick is actually outputting. Red is what it's outputting into the emulator. And now all of a sudden, what we find is I can now run. So there you go. So that's what Squircle does. Now you might be thinking, well, why is that so important for a whole video? Well, it impacts your aim as well. Um, so what I found was that I kind of, I'm trying to get like the full range of these corners and I find that diagonal aiming is much easier when you've got the full range here. That's my personal view. You might disagree. You might prefer, you know, not to have that, which would be zero, would be not having that. And then the complete opposite would be one where you can see like it outputs right away off the charts. Basically, this is what this means. It's like off the chart. Um, or you might like go with something old like 8000 where it's not quite as diagonal. It's not a huge difference. And obviously, if you go up really high values, you can see it gets less squirkly. Um, so, yeah, I recommend personally having something like 4000 set here whereby, you know, you get more diagonal output, a bit more like the DualShock 3, a bit more like the con the, the controller um, that this game had in mind when they designed the game. So, yeah, that's that's Squircle. Now, the third thing. Um, so, I have mentioned DS4 Windows being useful for stick multiplier. 
But to be honest with you, you can still play good without DS4 Windows. DS4 Windows has 0.5 MS, which is nothing. It really is nothing. I could add 5 MS to MGS Ninja, Solid 007, Night Fox, whoever. They'd still kick the shit out of you all, like generally speaking. 0.5 MS is really not going to do anything at all. It's not even noticeable for, you know, anyone. Which is not noticeable by humans. Um, so, yeah, you don't need DS4 Windows anymore unless if you want to change these stick multipliers and you need DS4 Windows. Fair enough. But the main reason you don't need DS4 Windows anymore is we've now got this setting called Anti-Dead Zone. And this is the third thing I'm covering. So, to explain what Anti-Dead Zone is, first I have to explain something here. If this is a dead zone, if I move my analog stick past here, I should move in theory. In theory, I should move. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you that I'm not moving. I've actually taken the analog stick even further and I'm not moving. So you see here, I don't move. Okay, it's a bit shaky that. So we're going to try. In fact, let's, let's try something like this. There we go. That's easier. I'm not moving anywhere. So that's telling us that no matter what dead zone I set, I won't move. Simple as that. Um, I, I'd only start moving if I went somewhere around here. And I know that because I know that the game has a dead zone. It's hard coded in itself. So whatever I set here does not work until we got anti dead zone on here applied. So I'm going to set something high because I don't know roughly when you'd start walking. So now what you'll see is blue is where my analogs actually is. Red is what it's actually outputting. So if I save that now, I'm walking. It's rough, roughly there. But um, yeah, even if it's here, which is what I initially had, it, it would start walking. And that's what anti-dead zone does really. It bypasses the dead zone set in the game. So when I set my dead zone, like in Call of Duty, to 5%, so I want 5% analog stick movement, so like something like this, start moving my character, okay? Something like this. This will allow, anti-dead zone will allow it to move like it would in Call of Duty. So it allows you to set dead zones and for them to actually work. So I highly recommend play with anti-dead zone and finding the point where your character starts to move. And it's good for aiming as well, because what many players want to do, if I just save this now, and climb back up here. Um, what many, uh, so what you want to do is kind of find a point in your mind where when you move this right stick, you want your character to move. So I'm, I'm actually going to do it with pad screen open here. So I'm going to try and find that point. So I think, okay, so somewhere there, I think, somewhere around about that. So we're saying somewhere that, okay? Now, this won't alone work. So if I was to hold this, I'm going to try and hold this with my cheek bone here. You can see my camera's not moving. And this time I managed to hold it perfectly, so there we are. But if I do this, my camera's moving. So anti dead zone makes your dead zone work by setting what I call personally what I call a minimum input because once I get past the dead zone it's it, it's giving the game this minimum value so that he knows my camera needs to move when I've got past here so that's anti dead zone explained now there's one more thing I have to explain obviously there are controller settings in RPCS3 you're also going to have to look at trying different values here like you know in your over the shoulder normal view Again, I'm not recommending values because everyone is different in what they control. Even the values I've got here are just like for testing. They're not even the values I use. So do not copy them. It's stupid and retarded to do so. Um, now, what I wanted to say was that if you find that before you're having to aim at someone, you're having to readjust all the time and you think that you can never get over that barrier, you can never master that, your control settings are probably not good. So what I mean is, let's say I always just go and headshot this guy in the center. Let's say I've just gone in a fight where I've had to headshot a guy crouched and then I'm finding myself having to lift this up. If I'm having to readjust this a few times rather than just one stroke and then going bang, bang, bang in a live mixed game or res, because you don't know from, from a solo train, you have to go in a proper game with players to test your aim. So like TDM, 
uh, mix, something like that are probably the best things. You need to go into those and test your settings and you'll probably readjust whilst you're in the game. There's no avoiding that, absolutely not. Um, but anyway, what, what was I gonna say now? Yeah, so that's kind of the thing. So make sure that whatever you're setting, you set, you're not having to adjust before you aim because then it's probably not good. And that pretty much summarizes this video. I hope it explains some things that changed with the emulator, with the anti-dead zone specifically, and the stick multiplier not working. Those are the two things that changed. I think a lot of people don't necessarily know that. So I think this will be a, a really helpful video for people. And that's it, folks. See you around, and I hope that helps.